I have the great honor of introducing a remarkable person tonight. About 15, 16 months ago, the board of directors of Lockheed Martin made a very wise decision. On an equal opportunity basis, they selected the best person to be the new chairman, president, and CEO of the world's largest defense contractor. And I'm delighted that after an exhaustive search, they went inside their corporation to someone who'd earned her spot for 30 years. And that lady is the lady who will give our keynote address tonight, Ms. Marilyn Hewson. Join me, this is a remarkable woman. Thank you very much, Tony, for that kind introduction. And thanks to you, all of you here, for the World Affairs Council evening and for this opportunity to speak to you tonight. You know, it's really an honor to share the stage with the many distinguished leaders that are being honored tonight and to be part of an event that is supporting such noble goals and objectives. I want you to think about today. Today is a bit of a milestone day in history. Because on this date, 45 years ago, the Apollo 9 capsule splashed down in the cold, choppy waters of the Atlantic Ocean, just north of Puerto Rico. And after enduring the grueling re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, the capsule, nicknamed Gumdrop for its trademark shape, deployed three orange parachutes and floated safely onto the waves where it was picked up by the USS Guadalcanal. Now, Apollo 9 was the first test of the lunar module, or LIM, as it was known. And during their 10-day mission, astronauts James McDivitt, Russell Swickard, and David Scott put the LIM through its paces, ensuring that it would operate perfectly when it landed on the surface of the moon. The mission was flawless. It was an incredible step forward in innovation and a stepping stone to a moment that four months later united the world in awe and wonder at what mankind can achieve. The space program revolutionized the way that we communicate, the way we learn, the way we think about our fragile environment and the Earth itself. In fact, if you used a GPS system to find your way here tonight, or if you happen to check the weather report to see if you needed a jacket, which you did, or if you stopped at an ATM today to get some extra cash, you have space technology to thank for that. Satellites make all of that everyday convenience for you possible. And really, you can thank McDivitt, Swickert, and Scott and the thousands of pioneering Apollo astronauts, scientists, and engineers who were there when it all began. They sparked innovations that literally changed the history of our country and of our world. Innovation has been at the heart of human achievement for centuries. And today, it continues to be the catalyst that drives progress and discovery. But those achievements didn't happen by accident. They took vision, they took purpose, they took dedication, and they took investment. We're surrounded by so much innovation that every day we probably take it for granted. In fact, when was the last time you stopped to think about how amazing it is that your cell phone can read to you turn-by-turn -turn directions? The reality is, though, that innovation is always harder than it looks. 
And tonight, I'd like to ask you to think about what it is that it will take for all of us as a global community to continue to push the envelope, to continue to set audacious goals, to continue to chase the horizon of the next great breakthrough. Because the fact is that innovation is a scarce resource. And if we don't fuel it, if we don't nurture it, if we don't harvest it, we risk losing it. But it have, doesn't have to be that way. I mean, I believe that we have an opportunity to turn innovation into a renewable resource, tapping into a bottomless well of ideas, new breakthroughs, new talent, and doing so at a global level. So how do we achieve that goal? Well, I'd like to suggest three actions. The first one is the reason that we're all here tonight, education. All innovation starts with education. And I can think of no more important place for us to focus as a global community. It's absolutely crucial to our understanding of our world and of each other. We all know that the importance of science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM education, we know how important that is. Engineers and technologists are the lifeblood of innovation. You probably also know that we are dangerously low on the next generation STEM talent. In fact, recent data shows that we're facing a potential shortfall of one million STEM professionals in the next decade. And that's a challenge that must be addressed if we want to make sure that innovation is a renewable resource. Fortunately, we have plenty of opportunities to advance education around the world. There are currently 6.8 billion mobile devices worldwide, and nearly 40% of the world's population is connected to the internet. That's opened up unprecedented opportunities for global learning. Students in Qatar can take quantum mechanics at Stanford, and entrepreneurs in Montana can learn management strategies from professors in Melbourne. Students at every level are being connected to global classrooms, from Tanzania to Texas, teaching them about new cultures, new ways of thinking, and new technologies. And of course, we're fortunate to have the contributions of the exceptional individuals that you've seen tonight that are being recognized. They are leading the landmark educational initiatives, the international partnerships, and advances in journalism that are transforming learning. Thank you to all of you for making a difference for the next generation. The next action required to turn innovation into a renewable resource is strengthening global cooperation. I know that each of us here tonight understand that better than anyone. That the more we are co collaborating globally, the faster our innovation engine accelerates. When we break down barriers among nations, when we share expertise, resources, technology, and discoveries, that's when innovation thrives. I think Bruno Landman, executive director of INSEAD, one of the world's leading international business schools, put it best. He said, most innovation does not happen in the lab. It happens in the cafeteria. You have someone studying electrical engineering, sitting across the table from someone doing ancient Greek philosophy, and you start a conversation. This is the real root of innovation. You know, that sharing of ideas across boundaries is absolutely crucial to innovation. I know this from experience. I've seen firsthand the tremendous value that international partnerships bring to our programs at Lockheed Martin. Revolutionary technologies like the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter were made possible by global collaboration. And that's why I'm proud to be serving on the President Obama's Export Council. This is where leaders from across industries are exploring new ways to spark innovation on a global scale. We're working to shape policies that encourage international collaboration and open the door for technology advancement and economic growth for the US and all of our international partners. 
So now is the time to support the kind of collaboration we need from policies to partnerships to make innovation a renewable resource. The third action is making the right investments. As we saw in the Apollo program, innovation doesn't just happen. Great achievements, whether it's innovation in technology, in the arts, or any field of endeavor, start with the idea that gets nurtured and supported. Smart investments can mean the difference between world-changing innovations and good ideas that simply die on the vine. Just last month, we saw an example of a smart invest investment in action. At the White House, they announced the launch of two new manufacturing innovation institutes. One will be based in Detroit, and it will focus on manufacturing lightweight and modern metals. And the other is a Chicago-based consortium that will concentrate on digital manufacturing and design technologies. It's because of our strong partnership, public-private partnership, that these institutes will become regional hubs that are part of teaching factories and their technology incubators and their proving grounds for new products and processes. On a global scale, I know that you're familiar with the Clinton Global Initiative. President Clinton's vision in establishing the initiative in 2005 was to engage global leaders in addressing the world's most pressing challenges and implementing innovative solutions. CGI brings together some of the world's most powerful people, each of whom makes a commitment to action on a significant global challenge. To date, more than 2,500 of these commitments to action have been made, and already 430 million people in over 180 countries have been positively impacted. That's inspiring, and that's the difference smart investment in innovation can make. Taking a chance on those breakthrough ideas can pay huge dividends, strengthen economies, open up new possibilities, and make our world a better place. In today's tough fiscal environment, it's important to remember that putting resources toward innovation isn't about spending, it's about investing. And if we want to make innovation a renewable resource, that smart global investment must continue. I believe that working together, we can make innovation a renewable resource. We have all the pieces. I look around this room, we have the talent, the dedication, and the leadership to make it happen. Albert Einstein said, if I have seen farther than others, it is because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Well, we're all standing on the shoulders of great leaders of the past. Amazing men and women like the Apollo astronauts who splashed down 45 years ago today. It's time for us to pay it forward. So let us, together, support the great thinkers of the future. Let us stand as a global community shaping a more enlightened world. And let us be the giant shoulders on which the next generation of innovators stand. Thank you again to the World Affairs Council and tonight's honorees for leading the way. And to all of you tonight, thank you for the work that you're doing and our future together is very bright. Thank you.